All right, we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Daniel Walker. This is David Corshin. We're going to be talking about WordPress and the chamber of single page apps. Um, you'll see. We're going to be building a sample Patronus viewer within a custom WordPress theme. Go Tronus. That's, all right, that's David. Deal with it. I'm Daniel. Um, yeah, Twitter, GitHub. Great. All right, so here's the problem. Um, sometimes a client or somebody will need some functionality that's too complex to use a pre-made WordPress plugin or WordPress functionality. Maybe you can't use advanced custom fields or whatever. For instance, this is kind of the idea that started this. A client needed me to make like an entire music streaming app in WordPress, and there just didn't ex nothing existed. So I used Angular. I used a Laravel backend right there in WordPress. Um, but we said, hey, you know, maybe you don't need WordPress, maybe or maybe you don't need Laravel. You could use a custom post type to represent your data. With this music app, there was way too many complex joins and searching and users and like all kinds of stuff they need to be. So we're like, we're not going to try to use WordPress. We're just going to put Laravel in it. So it kind of spawned this talk. So you still want to use the great blogging features of WordPress or the page management stuff, the CMS stuff. So the solution was within a WordPress theme, we'll show custom content within a single page app. Uh, you could do multiple single page apps. The easiest way is to just put one in a template file. Or you could use a plugin. If you're online, you can see the example code we're going to be talking about on my GitHub. Here's the link. Uh, raise your hand if you need to copy that so that I don't. Laser Goat WordCamp Spa with a dash. All right, we're good. So here's a flow chart to help you decide what you need. If you need to display some non-WordPress stuff in a WordPress site. Will an existing plugin meet the need? Yes. Use it. I can't help you there. No, an existing plugin or theme, whatever, will not meet the need. So now you know you need to make a single page app. Can the data that you need to show, can it exist? All right, remind me in five minutes. To <clears throat> Can it exist as a custom post type? Maybe you could use advanced custom fields. Who knows what advanced custom fields is? Okay, great. Uh, if you haven't, advanced custom fields is a really great plugin that allows you to add metadata to your post. So with it, you know how when you edit a post type or a page, you can just edit the title and the content? Advanced custom fields will allow you to put other little editors, like maybe you want a radio button on your posts. You can also extend or add data to a custom post type. So if a custom post type will, will work, then you can use the JSON API plugin, which is what uh, Adam just now talked about in this room. If it won't, then you can go all out, add a PHP library, or forget a local API, you could hit something like the music the iTunes music API for your data. Any, anything. You, know, you don't have to, if just because you're using WordPress doesn't mean you can only use WordPress. Uh, and then, regardless of which backend API you use, you can use a React or an Angular or a Backbone JS, whatever you want as a JavaScript library with, for your single page app on your template. I made an entire music streaming thing. Um, if you go to premiumbeat.com, it's just like that one. And it's in WordPress. So for this talk, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to show you using the JSON API, which is a WordPress plugin. And I've heard that a newer version of WordPress is going to support JSON HTTP requests without you needing this plugin. And then we're going to use a React front end.
bonus. <laughs> this is my shameless plug. Um, in preparation for this, for this talk, I've always used VVV. Who's heard of varying vagrant vagrants or whatever it's called? Um, so I made something called Home Press, which is a simpler version of that because it only requires one command and virtually no configuration. So if you want to run a WordPress project locally, you can do npm install home press. And then you just do home press start. And it will make a per project virtual machine. It's for local development. It's an alternative to VVV. And it will give you a VM for each project. The only downfall is that it will give you a VM for each project. So if you have 20 projects, then don't use it because it's going to take up like 40 gigs. Uh, but if you have 20 projects, then you're qualified to use VVV. The home press is for simpler, more beginners or whatever. And there's the link. It's also on my GitHub. So we're going to be talking about the back end and front end. So on the back end, we're going to just briefly show you how to do these three things. Install the JSON API plugin, make the custom post types to represent our Patronuses, since this is Harry Potter theme, and set up the advanced custom fields on those post types. And then David is going to show you these three things, how to get your SPA as a short code. You could also do it as a plugin. Then how to install React or Angular, and then how to make fetch calls to your backend API for the actual data, which is, in our case, Patronuses. So my parts first. In your functions.php, who's ever edited this file? OK, good. If not, then it's, if you've used WordPress, you've had to add something to this file, unless you found a magical theme that actually did everything. So this is how you make a custom post type. I'm not going to explain every line because you can just Google this. But for ours, we just had to tell it what a Patronus is. Um, so after doing this, a like Patronus thing will show up on your sidebar in the WordPress admin. Then advanced custom fields. I just added some metadata, an image, a type, a description, and whether or not it's corporeal because that's a Harry Potter theme. And all of ours are corporeal, but that will give you a radio button that will allow you to change it. And then on the ACF, this will make those custom fields show on post types that are Patronuses. So it's pretty handy. Um, then the only other step you have to do is attach the advanced custom field metadata to your custom post type thing. That way, when the JSON API requests a Patronus post type, it will know to attach those meta fields. The newer version, you don't even have to do that. And this is how you would do that. I'm going to skip it. So after all that, then you can test out your API. All you have to do is, in your browser, type that in, and you'll see that you'll get your Patronuses, assuming you made them. So this is what it would look like. Here's the, one, the advanced custom fields that got attached by my code that I skipped. And here's the one that, by default, is already in there. This was introduced in a newer version of the JSON API. So we have duplicate data, but it's not a big deal. WordPress. Have you seen how it stores media? All right. So this is the resource, uh, the HTTP endpoint that your front end will be hitting from your theme. Now remember, it could be any endpoint. Like I said, you could hit the iTunes Music API. You could hit an Amazon Gateway API, like what Adam was talking about, whatever. So on the API, if you need complex joins, maybe custom post types aren't going to meet your need. So forget it. Put something else in there. Use Laravel. Use a different uh, server entirely as your API. Think outside the box. Use Laravel. I, I really like Laravel. If you're going to use PHP, that's your best bet. All right, so Daniel brought up one really good point, and it's the fact that it should not matter where your data comes from in the API. He said it could hit the iTunes library, it could hit WordPress. The thing is, it shouldn't know that we're hitting WordPress, because 
you know, if we said our backend was WordPress, that's a little embarrassing. You know, we should be using Laravel or like a real API or something like that. But the point of this is to pretend that WordPress is an API. So the way that I did it over here is I added it as a shortcode. You could have done it as a plugin, uh, but I was too lazy, so. Exactly, but I just added a shortcode. So this shortcode is going to do um, two things. Uh, one, we're going to add Patronus, so all we have to do is add Patronus in tags, and this Patronus function is going to poop out our entire app. So uh, now your phone's locked, so I have to I know. <laughs> All right, so, so here's the two parts to it. First, we're going to have some HTML that gets spit out, and we're going to give it an ID of app. Now, I wasn't being very clever. You could probably give it any, what the? You could give it any sort of uh, specific ID you want. And the second thing I'm doing is I'm adding this script tag. Try to keep it as small as possible. I'm keeping this very minimal. We have HTML and we have JavaScript, which is going to attach whatever our front end app is onto that ID. So let's see how that looks. I think it's down. I used React. How many of you guys here heard of React? All right, a lot of you. How many of you wish that you were doing React instead of WordPress? All right, I know that you really don't want to raise your hand. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. WordPress is good. Uh, it's keeping PHP alive, so there's that. All right, so let's talk about our bundle of joy, our one bundle.js file. There's many cool front end technologies that you could do uh, use to make this bundle file. I used Webpack, you could use Browserify, JSPM, Rollup, I, you know, there's many of them. You could even do it manually if you hate yourself, whatever. Now, you might be thinking, why didn't I use iframes to include my app instead? Should I have used iframes? Yeah, probably. But, um, I have no good reason why I didn't do it. I was just being lazy. But iframes are good for if you want to encapsulate your, um, your styles and your JavaScript so that you could be certain that no other styles or JavaScript are going to find their way into your, um, into your front end app and screw with it. So um, about half of you know what React is. Um, so I'm guessing half of you do not or were too shy to raise your hands or whatever. So this is a little bit of React code, and I'm sorry if you can't see this all the way back there. Plenty of empty seats up here. You should have sat closer, but that's okay. Um, really simple. We have our app that we're building with React, and then we're rendering our app into that div. Remember the div that we had our ID of app? Now, um, we said we had one file, so you know, we have to uh, sort of account for these guys right here, React and React DOM. So the way, the way that we do it is I'm including a folder in the theme called Patronus. This is the folder where my entire front end app is going to live. And um, so everything is in the source. I only have, uh, you know, my index.js file. But since I'm importing React and I'm importing React DOM, I'm using npm to install those, and those are going to go inside the node modules folder, and then um, this gets spit out into the bundle.js. So there's my Patronus folder. I probably should have done this while I was talking. And there's the uh, bundle.js. So if you remember, our bundle.js is what we use to go on the web page, and that's going to attach to our app. So Everything is self-contained right there in these few little lines, which is great because I haven't done PHP in a year, so this was like my full PHP attention span. Three lines. Now, we have to make um, 
React pretend that we're not dealing with a uh, with the weird JSON API thing. So I have this mapatronus function which massages the data that WordPress gives me and gives me an actual Patronus. So we have the ID, we have whether the Patronus is visible or not because as you're gonna see pretty soon, it's gonna be like a search result thing. And then we're spitting out everything in this advanced custom field object right onto our Patronus so that we could uh, play around with it as if we were playing around with the actual Patronus and not with some weird WordPress JSON API object. So also, each of these needs a unique ID. Otherwise, React is going to freak out. And yeah, I should have looked at this. All right, the last part of it is actually getting our data. When our app loads, which is this components did mount hook, we're fetching the API here. And um, since I didn't want to do pagination, I just put 99. I don't know if there are more than 99 Patronuses, but if so, I'm sorry. Um, we're converting that to JSON, and then we're putting those Patronuses in our app. So here's a summary of what happened. And of course, our function before, we're gonna map each of these Patronuses to map Patronus so that it looks like a normal Patronus instead of a big WordPress object. All right, live coding time. Um, actually, I'm not gonna be live coding, but we're gonna be showing you the app. Live coding is boring. Okay. All right, so here's our Patronus charms. All of these were custom posts added by Daniel. So all of these, yeah. There we go, our custom posts. Add a new one. Goats too, because we already have a goat. <laughs> give it a description. Are we gonna give it an image? So the cool thing about this is you have an API that you as a developer don't need to manage. You could easily have someone else create each of these types without having to have any knowledge about code, which is awesome. They don't need to know about databases or anything. And now when we go back to our app, get to reload probably. But we'll see our, uh, our code right there. And then we click it, it's right there. Mm -hmm. It's with an I. Yeah. Then. Yeah, I could have gone the extra mile and when clicking on one of these, do another API request for each of these posts. But in our initial call, we're just getting all of the Patronuses right from the get-go. So when you click one, it just displays that Patronus. Now, if you have more than 100, 200, whatever, and you don't want to bog the page down by having to download all of those first, then you could get deeper into this and do like um, searching or you know actually querying for the specific post type or pagination, which I was too lazy to do. So over here we have about 20, I wanna say. And you can see everything in here is inside the uh, ACF. And so that gets spit out over here. And then using React, we're just like, this is just a normal JavaScript object. So we're just going to play around with it and display it you know, just like that. And that way we don't have to deal with PHP, which is awesome. No. 
Actually, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> go to um, index.js right there in the source. Okay, this is our entire app. The mapatronus function, go down. Not that part. All right, here's a cool function that we could talk about, handle search. So whenever you search for a term, all it's going to do is go through each Patronus, and if it's not the matching Patronus, we set its visibility to false. I have no idea what that does, but it works. And then there's one where when you click a Patronus, it sets the Patronus to whatever Patronus you clicked. Yeah, go down. So here we're doing the fetching. Here we're rendering each Patronus, right down there. Now React has a silly thing where if you want to actually put HTML, you have to type this ridiculously long string. I'm sure it's for a good reason, but it's saying we want to dangerously set the inner HTML to whatever. I'm just hoping that whoever makes these Patronuses, even if it's not a developer, doesn't put any funky scripts in there or whatever and hacks our whole system. So there is a major security risk by doing this, but it's still a good idea, at least we thought so. All right, so Daniel's going to demonstrate hacking our app. You never know, it might. All right, so we're gonna update this. And go back to our page. And hopefully it won't alert. All right. Oh, sweet. Look how smart WordPress is. It's good for something. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyone have any questions? Really? All the way in the back. He was asking what exactly is Laravel and why would you want to use it? So. You won it. Next question. Uh, Laravel is a PHP framework. So if if you want to stick, my wife is here. All right. Um, if you want to stick with PHP, for instance, we used a local API for this. But again, you could use any API because that's how the internet works. But uh, since the server is running. WordPress, the server is therefore running PHP, and Laravel is a PHP framework. Maybe you've heard of Zend or Symfony or KPHP, Laravel. There's a bunch of them. Laravel is one with great community support. Um, after switching from CodeIgniter, thank God, I started using um, Laravel, and it has a lot of benefits uh, for a PHP framework. It has a lot of the right ideas with migrations, um, keeping track of your database schema, all of that is really easy with Laravel. Plus, it has a really awesome router, um, which you can use for things like a JSON API, where you only want to return, instead of rendering views, you render a JSON string that could be consumed by a front-end script like this. Laravel is really great about that. Also, another nice thing about Laravel is any part of Laravel that you don't like, you can extend it or replace it or remove it without having to edit any core code. Did that answer your question about Laravel? It... Okay, yeah. It's a PHP framework. WordPress is technically a PHP CMS, um, so it's they're both chunks of code. Uh, you could 
use whatever you want, React or Angular. Oh, so the question was, um, why would you choose React as it is the obvious choice for this? Um, I'm kidding. All right, so basically use whatever you're most comfortable with. What we're trying to do here is communicate with an API and not tie ourselves to the API. So as I said in the beginning, we don't know we're hitting WordPress. As far as I know, my app could live anywhere. So as long as you have a front end that does data fetching and um, actually that's pretty much all you need. Data fetching, converts it to JSON, displays that JSON in a useful way for the user, then it's going to be a good framework. But it's almost 2016, you should be using React. Oh, okay. So, um, so with React 2, it's all component-based, right? And I know Angular 2 is going that way too. Um, and with React, you also have one-way data binding. So, in my search, um, in my search page thing, we knew exactly when it was going to re-render. You click one, and so it sets a state, and then it re-renders based on what the new state is. So now my state has a Patronus in it. I'm going to show the Patronus, and it even gets a little bit more advanced with the actual searching. So if you go back, and we're going to actually search. Each time we search for something, that's telling React, hey, we're changing the state, and um, it says, okay, you changed the state. Let me re-render based on the new state. And um, it's just a very clean way of doing data flow that Angular 1 sort of doesn't do. But it's good because if you're trying to do quick prototypes, Angular 1 is great for that. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? It's a really cool app. <laughs> so this is some, it's some startup called Plunk. I doubt they're going to make it. Anyways. They have actually, I, have even bought music from one of their competitors. How horrible is that? Okay, so this is a WordPress site, but when you close to the library page, it becomes a single page app that they hired me to make. So some other designer made the entire site, but then I just came in and made this. So this is hitting a Laravel API, which is on this server. The music files themselves are in Rackspace cloud files, and then I used HTTP streaming for um, the audio. So you, you can scroll through, and this is all Angular stuff. Um, they need to make more music, but so anything like this, these events, this is all Angular. And it's great because it, you, you could do this with custom post, post types, but like for instance, the search, you can search by sounds like or feels like, it's genres and moods. If you were using custom post types to represent this data, you would have a lot of messy PHP because you can't really do joins. You'd have to like use taxonomies and um, it would just get messy real quick. So I was able to use actual PHP to represent this and a MySQL database. So you can be like heavy RB, RB and uh, whatever it is. No, no, there is no such thing. RBNB is a little lighter. So how about uh, some emotional pop maybe, I don't know. So yeah. Anyways, so this was what started all. You can make playlists, and also when you log in as an admin, I made a thing within this spa to allow them to upload music, tag it, uh, all of that good stuff. So, and the login is also linked to this spa. Any questions about it? And you can like go to their actual page. Never met them. 
um, because I am the only one who knows about them, and I didn't even buy their music. Their music's really good. Here, maybe this will work. There's even a little scrubber. Some of them are some of them are good. It's like this could be on a startup commercial. And then there'll be like here's a minute long version. Anyways. Um, no, they, they could make it, it's just that they have a lot of competition. Like, apparently they copied this site, premiumbeat.com. And it's literally the same, except way more selection. But they even have the 15, 30, 60 thing. They paid me to copy it, apparently. Any other questions? That's a great question. I didn't get paid enough to answer that question. Um, they're, you know, they're not secure. Like, they're publicly available. That way anyone can listen to them. There's no OAuth or anything like that. Cloud Files does have those settings. But um, in order to upload to it, you need access. But as far as downloading or streaming, I just bill them based on their traffic which is another reason I don't think they're going to make it because they're virtually free. It's like almost no traffic. But I made it to handle a lot of traffic. It could. It could. Any other questions? Any questions for David? Who feels like they learned something? Okay. So you guys are now going to think outside the box when it comes to WordPress and showing data and uh, making your own awesome plugins. All right. Thank you.